Hello. During the last years, many refugees came to Germany and they were searching for asylum to build up a new peaceful life. As a consequence, it's our task to integrate them into our society. A major part of our everyday life is our job, which offers us social contact, financial security, and self-fulfillment. Thus, we need to integrate the refugees into the labor market. To do so, we were looking for a solution. We are the team from the Helene Lange Gymnasium Rendsburg, and that is our solution. We will work you through with an example. Hello. My name is Maya. I am 19 years old. I came to Germany from Homs, Syria, one year ago. I gained asylum so I can stay in Germany. I'm a new refugee. Since then I have already acquired some skills and I hope that I will be able to work in Germany soon. I want to earn some money and help my family and I want to become German like you. These German students told me that they know a way to help me do it so. Let's take a closer look at it. Yeah, right. But first, we need to check your skills, Myla. So, um, do you have any basic education? Yes, I completed the Syrian Middle School. And I have also worked in an office for half a year. Very nice. Um, have you already learned any uh, German? Yeah, ich habe das Goethe Zertifikat Level B1. So I get along during the day. For example, I can go shopping alone or have normal conversations. Okay, great. One last question. Um, have you visited the course of integration by the Ministry for Migration and Refugees, the BAMP? Yes. Is anything else required? No. Um, now you can enter what we call the course system. And it's just so easy. You will enter an internship of just two weeks, and so we can check what working skills you already have. After these two weeks, we will have a little talk with your employer, and after this, also a little test. Stop. I'm afraid of tests. Is this really necessary? Uh, you don't have to be afraid of tests. It's just to give you the optimal education that matches the knowledge you already have. Uh, we will use this information uh, about you to classify you into the courses. Courses? Yes, my love, courses. To improve your basic education, there are nine courses. Each course teaches the curriculum of the uh, uh, German sec uh, secondary school. Course 1 to 5 is like the German main school. If you add uh, course 6, you reach the middle school graduation. And if you visit all nine courses, you finish high school. In your case, a middle school graduation would make the most sense. Based on your evaluation, you will be classified into one of those courses. We classified you into course 4. So you only need to complete courses 4, 5, and 6. And you have the German level of education called middle school graduation. Why do they have to visit the courses one to three? And that's because you already have the knowledge taught in these courses, as you proved in the test. And learning things twice isn't efficient. So uh, now you've completed courses one to six, and uh, you're ready to start a German education. If you still don't know what profession you want to exercise, you can also do a long-term internship. This will help you to learn about new jobs. So I just need to complete these courses 4, 5, and 6, and then I will earn my own money? Absolutely correct. But what exactly is a course? OK, um, the courses. In a course, there are four main subjects, which are German, mathematics, politics and economics, and physical education. There are six lessons a day, and the courses will be run by vocational and community schools. But is the system only designed for refugees like me? Uh, no, that isn't possible. In uh, Germany, we have the so-called principle of equality. And in conversations with people from the BAMF and the IHK, it became clear to us that the system has to be available for everyone, German citizens and refugees. This system does not work against the existing educational system, but it goes hand in hand with it. And of course, it is joinable for everyone, as I said, but our main focus is definitely for refugees. So uh, we've shown why refugees should go with our system, but uh, now the companies are missing. We also thought about their advantages and why we would like to set incentives. Our first idea is a certificate, which is handed out by the Ministry for Migration and Refugees, after a completed qualification of a refugee. 
so it's visible for everyone that the company promotes integration. Our second idea is a subsidy with, for such companies. We thought about a subvention for, of 30 to 40 percent of the qualification salary because most of the companies ask for more financial incentives. An advantage of hiring the refugee is the new way of thinking. Because of their origin and their way of life, they think different about most topics and could help your company, especially in projects. So now we come to our calculation. Our calculation is based on the main factors. First, of course, teachers, because we need someone to educate the refugees. Second, the transportation costs, which we want to keep as low as possible, but we can't leave them out, because we have to pay for local bus services in some areas to bring the refugees to school. Third, the material for school. We want to introduce e-readers, because they are the most sustainable and much cheaper than buying thousands of books. Also, it's easier to organize, because you just need to give the refugees an e-reader and not a tower of books. Also, the locations must be paid in some way. In the beginning, we said we want to do it in vocational and community schools, but they also cost money, which is to be paid by the state. So all in all, we came to 6,000 euros per refugee per year. Well, now I understand why the company should employ me, but what are my advantages of working for no money? On short-term run, you're right, because you won't get any money during the internship and the education, and not the full salary during your qualification. But long-term run, you will earn more money because the better the education, the higher the income, and the better the chance to get a job. Okay, thank you. So, help the immigrants to get integrated in the labor market and thus to become part of our society. Thank you for listening. Okay, hello, I'm back again. I'm running this show this today. Um, I think we should give the group a round of applause at the start because this was a very interesting presentation and I really like the style of the presentation too. Okay, just like in the last session, I'm going to take a bit of pressure off the students at the start and just introduce our so-called experts in the field. Um, we, have a, we have Ferry from before. Um, Ferry, you work for the Deutschlands um, Inter, um, Association for Integration, right? And also, you started your own Verbund? Verband? Okay. Um, Okay, does that, does that work? Can you switch the... Yeah, it's, it's okay, okay. Um, I'll just ask a question and then hand it to you. Um, why are you so interested in integration? Well, um, I think integration is a, is a key topic to preserve the peace in our society, to, have, to, to avoid having groups left out, to have parallel societies. And um, I've been looking around and also looking at other countries and there is a recipe to it. There isn't the remedy that, that heals societies. Each society has its own set of factors that help them build a healthy society. And Germany has to find out a way how to do it with integration and other things. Okay. Okay, our new discussant is Savin Schmidt uh, Koshkun. And, sorry, uh, you, you work for 
the Joblinger Society. Could you tell us a bit about this? Not the compass so far, but just the, the society. Sure. First of all, thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here today, and thank you very much for your presentation. I'm actually really impressed, and to the Turkish um, guests here as well, hoş um, geldiniz. Um, well, Joplinge is an initiative that was uh, initiated by the Boston Consulting Group and the BMW Foundation in 2007, and our job is to place young people um, yeah, socially disadvantaged people into vocational training. Okay, so this is German people too, it's not just migrants. It's not just only migrants, but we do have um, a percentage of 60% of our participants do have a migration background. Okay, so that's the, the main function of your organization. And you are the project coordinator for Joblinge Compass, which is particularly for migrants and refugees, right? It's actually um, specifically only for, my, uh, for refugees, not for migrants. Okay, what are the differences and the, the main obstacles between um, the main Joblinge um, Foundation, how it runs, and the Joblinge Compass? Well, in Joblinge Compass, we actually need more time. Um, in the regular program, we have six months, and it works very really well to integrate the young people into the vocational training through practical experiences, but that doesn't work with refugees. We just um, realized that we need more time to prepare them for the vocational training because most of them, they do have practical skills, they do have skills that they earn back home, but they don't always fit with the requirements we have here in Germany. So um, the companies require more and they also need to be successful in school, in the vocational school, and that doesn't work in six months. Okay. I'll ask you this in more detail in a few minutes, but I'd just like to know uh, from your, the, seeing the presentation, how close is this to what you do every day? It is actually quite close to our program. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Okay, so um, I'd like to welcome uh, two members of the group here. Could you just introduce yourselves to the audience? Of course. Um, I'm Hannes, I'm 16 years old and I'm from uh, the Hilling Lang Gymnasium in Rendsburg. Yes, I'm Hans Christian, and I'm also from the Helene Lange Gymnasium in Rendsburg, and, I, and I'm 17 years old. Okay, Hans Christian, um, why, why did you pick this talk? Um, first of all, we uh, want, don't want to pick this topic, but then this was our second choice, and um, yes, in the end, I'm very happy that we took this topic, um, because, yes, uh, like the group before said, it's a very, um, yes, Actual, uh, uh, no, current, uh, cu uh, very current topic um, that uh, uh, yes, we all have to deal with, and so yes, we <laughs> happy to, that we took this topic. Okay. okay, it's going to seem like I'm repeating a lot of these questions from the previous round, but that's just because I'm fascinated that people so young would be interested in such an important topic and down to earth. And um, what did you like about researching this topic? And the methods I'm talking about, like uh, reading, gathering data, coming up with solutions. Um, I don't really get the Did question. you like reading the literature, for example? Um, uh, give <laughs> um, so, thank you first. Um, I really liked um, the conversation between us, our group, and um, professionals, uh, people that know about what is happening in Germany with the refugees, and to really have a conversation between us and what they know, what the, the knowledge that they have, and give input to us, and uh, working with this input and um, getting output and getting this into this project was really interesting. And how many of you were in the group? I think you were more than the last one. You're six or seven? Yeah, we are six people. Six people. So how did you d divide the tasks that you had to complete? Uh, we didn't really divide the parts, part, uh, tasks. We rather um, came together in a group and we discussed our ideas and uh, put all of these together to find the best solution uh, that we uh, can think of all together. And uh, we met up again and again and uh, we sat there and we think, thought about, okay, that is what we have now, and what is the problem with this system? What can be better? What can we do better? And uh, so that was the biggest part, what we did. We discussed our, uh, the topic. 
Okay, this is very interesting. Um, okay, so I'd like to uh, get the opinion of our experts here. Ferry, what did you think? Well, first of all, um, Hans Christian, thank you for the comment that this wasn't your first choice. Um, I think it's interesting because this happens a lot of times in life that you don't get the, the topic that you think is most sexy. But what's interesting, you probably found out the more you learned about the topic, the more it gets sexy. And the product you presented shows that you put all the effort in and it's a, it's a really, really good presentation. So thank you for that. Um, I think it's, it, it shows um, a lot of the important steps. And Sevim already mentioned <laughs> that she kind of copies her jobling. Eh? You reinvented it. Uh, which, and this is, a, this is a product they do for years and it's proved and it's shown the success. So it's, you're totally on the right track. Um, what, what I would suggest, or I think one additional thing to it is, um, it looks a little bit like, or that the, your model could also be applied to people who just migrate regular, and it's not so much that they came as refugees. And in the case of the refugees, we also have to consider that we deal with a lot of traumatized people. It's hard to get figures. I, I always press the experts on this, and they're like, give me a figure, give me a figure, because we kind of have to know what it is. But um, some experts in the field say that around 60 to 80 percent come traumatized just because they leave their home. So this is a traumatizing uh, thing you, you go through, but that's temporarily, so you, you lose it. But we'll have about 10 to 20 percent people and to a 1 million, this is 200, 100 to 200,000 people who've seen um, war, who've experienced death or rape or something really cruel. And it's going to be a long way to get them into a normal life. And I think we have to, to accompany their ways into the labor market also with some psychological um, coaching. I think they'd like to respond. Um, I think you're right at that point, um, but we, um, to put all this, uh, our presentation into 10 minutes, we focused on the group of people with maybe a little traumata or something that's um, gone away, um, to, uh, on the way into the um, core system. But um, yes, we also um, yes, thought of these people, and, but we can't put this, put this into our presentation. If, if you could have a longer presentation, um, if you could have fit one, one other thing in, what would you have put in? Um, maybe um, yes, another core system, but in, that's um, yes, um, cut onto um, the people that have um, yes, traumata and or, um, yes, they, which um, are traumata of their flu from their countries. Uh, additionally, um, so at first we knew this problem and we also addressed it in a kind of a way uh, because um, we uh, told you about our courses and uh, these courses that take, teach a curriculum of one school here in Germany and so on. And we especially um, don't uh, name any uh, kind of uh, time span in which these courses have to be completed. Because uh, we also thought of uh, these are refugees and they maybe don't know the German language so well or they don't understand it so well. And so we thought of, okay, they have these courses four, five, and six, for example. And the refugee, if he wants to, can do course four two times. So he repeated so he, that he know, gets better to know and gets more time to learn uh, the things he needs to know. Okay, Sabine? Well, um First of all, yeah, I have to say that it's really close uh, to the work we actually do right now and we do have models, um, for example, in Bavaria, vocational schools do have classes for refugees already, but I really like um, that you combine the practical with the education because we can see that the practical part works way better than the theoretical one and it's really hard to assess um, knowledge and skills only through the school. You need to put someone into the job to see if they can really do the job and what they bring from their country. 
but that's a, a point um, I would like to stress. Not everyone who, who got here and the majority of the people that came here last year is under the age of 25. Um, not everyone has nine years of school education. A lot of them came here with maybe four to six years of school education. We do have a lot of illiterate people um, that need special support. And also not everyone has training or vocational training in, in their home countries. So that's maybe like something you should think about. What happens to those people? How, how are you going to support those people? And Savim, of, yes. of the people that um, you help in Joblinger Compass, how many of them have an experience with the German language before they came to you? Well, it actually depends on our locations because in Munich we actually start with people that have no language skills. Um, so we start from scratch, but they're able to, to speak German in three months, I would say. And then we send... What, what level? B1, maybe? Mm, A2. A2, A2, yeah. A2. And then we send them to another 10-week uh, German course um, that is more job-orientated. And after that, they're able to do an internship. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it, it's, a it's a major obstacle for the people with no basis in the language and then being expected to, to join the labor market so quickly. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, maybe I can add um, that I really like the, the, the aspect that you um, get them into work through internships to see uh, what, their, what their capacities are, where they could fit in. Uh, I think we, we've been discussing this over breakfast and this is one of the most uh, difficult points right now to find out which jobs these people should go, which apprenticeships they should take, where they should apply because we have hundreds of, of professions in Germany. It's even German students don't know what jobs, what kind of trainings are out there. So it's even harder for people who haven't been grown or haven't grown up in this country to to see this multitude of, of choices so I think also one way and we've we've seen this in a, in a different set of integration is that in cases of successful integration there's uh, people tell us there's always been a Oma im house a grandma or an aunt or someone who did the homework with them or just uh, it's a more of a random meeting someone who gives advice to the young people who, because they, they know them, they, they see them on a daily basis, they get a feeling, they develop a feeling, what they can do, where they should go, where their strengths are, uh, what training they need. Um, maybe we can find a system where this grandma isn't so random but more in a structured way like a mentorship or something like this people who just accompany, them, accompany the people and just get a, develop a feeling where they should go, what profession is good for them. Another very interesting observation, and I don't know if you read this in the news, last week the Chancellor met with the CEOs of the 30 largest companies in Germany to discuss uh, ways to get um, refugees into work. And the interesting observation was that the 30 biggest companies, and they account for about 10% of all jobs in Germany, employed 50 refugees. And the small and medium enterprises employed way over 100,000 refugees. And this is one of the issues, is that the small companies are a lot closer to their communities. They know the people. The, the HR responsible is living in a neighborhood, and then she is able to bring in someone to the company for this training and just to, to get an idea of what this company does, what the product is about. And the big companies do like this, and they need a lot more structuring in getting the refugees into their work processes because we cannot leave them out. But it's interesting to see that at some point it works. And if, you, if we talk about 600, 700,000, 800,000 people who came into the country in 2015, and of those, 100,000 are already in jobs, this is actually quite amazing. Okay. Um, I just have a question for the, the group here, and then I'm going to get both of your opinion on it too. It's, um, it's kind of a philosophical question, but um, why is it so important? to integrate refugees into the labor market? Why do you think? It's just an opinion. 
I uh, think it's uh, at first uh, important um, we have to think of what would these people do if we don't integrate them. So what this, these people may will stay here in Germany, they have no work. And especially what many people um, fear nowadays is that the German state and uh, in the end the uh, German uh, citizens have to pay for these people. And uh, I think it's really important that uh, we get these people into work so that they own their own money and they can stand on their own feet and um, so that the German people don't have to care for them anymore. I think that is really important. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I also think that um, because in some talks with um, people from the um, Bundesagentur für Arbeit, um, we, yes, we get note that the, most of the refugees that come to Germany, they want to work here because they want to earn money that they can send back to their home countries, to their family, and that this, that this is their main, yes, their main aim um, because of what they want to work. Yeah, absolutely. And Ferry, maybe? Okay, how important is accessing the labor market to your main um, career goal of integration? Well, um, Again, I'm amazed um, about the students' um, drive to, to create justice, also to create justice towards the recepting society in the country to say, well, they have to self-sustain them and they have to make their own money so they don't receive the social welfare from the state. Um, this is one motif on this. Um, I think it's also important because these people will stay for several years to give them the ability to to feel proud and self-sustained and, and just make their own living and, and draw um, to, to get um, satisfaction from the work you do and just not sit around. So this is one, then that's an amazing observation. Um, and I don't know, Seven probably will confirm this. If you go to the, the bigger camps, uh, you had always a, a group of young people, uh, they're willing, they, they learn fast, they, they learn the language really fast, they, they want to go into a job, the only obstacle, obstacle is the bureaucracy, but you also have a lot of people who just sit around and they can't get their act together, um, they don't leave their camps, although they are allowed to, they are not exploring Berlin or Munich or Stuttgart or wherever they are, because it's a different country. I don't know what they're, why the reasons, but they don't take up the, the opportunities and I think we, we should also push their luck a little bit to, to draw satisfaction from a living and not just sit around, because if they do this for five years, it's not gonna be good for them. So it is important on one way or the other, it's by education or by work, but just to get them into some, some occupation that is satisfying. Okay, so we you're on the ground level of this, like uh, what sort of changes in a person do you see once you start activating them economically in this country? Well, actually, I think work is the key for integration because that's where you meet uh, German people, that's where you can have your own money that you can spend on the things you want to spend it for, you know? Nobody is telling you you have 200 euros and you have to spend it for this and that. No, you have your own money, you work for it. So it's all about um, satisfaction and self-fulfillment, you know? Those people didn't come here um, to be under the regulation of a state. They want to be free. They want to live. And that's a quality, it's, it's life quality absolutely, to work. Absolutely. And that's why it is so important. And I think we need to start with that as soon as possible because if you have people that sit around for five years, they won't be motivated to work. They will know that you can get money out of the social welfare system and you'll be fed, you'll have a house or a container or whatever where you can live in, but that's not quality. And that's why we need to start right after they arrive here. We need to give them the opportunity to learn the language right away. Doesn't matter if it's through the integration courses or an online system, but we need to, yeah, just um, catch them from the day one and then show them the opportunities because we do have the opportunities. In Germany, we have around 500,000 vocational training spots not filled every year. And I mean, that's, something we need to consider and 
It's not the first time that we're dealing with migration in Germany. I mean, we had 60 years ago people coming from all over Europe, Southern Europe, to work here, and we know what happened um, when you don't integrate them. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone thought, okay, we'll bring them here, they will work here, maybe for five, maybe for ten years, and then we'll send them back. So there was no need for integrating them. But those people, they're still here. And they have kids, and they have grandchildren. You know, and if you don't take the money and integrate them now, and don't invest in the integration now, you will have to pay for it in 50 years. Yeah. I think we can all agree that integrating refugees or even migrants into the labor market as soon as possible, it helps Germans, it helps refugees, it helps migrants, it helps absolutely everybody. There are no bad things to this. Okay, at this point, I think we have 10 minutes left. Um, I'd like to hear some questions from the floor. We have a question here in the middle. So if you understood that totally right, um, there will be an internship uh, of two weeks uh, planned before uh, getting into the courses um, just to get the people known. And uh, that's, you might, we actually want to address the point you made uh, to uh, know, get known with these people, get know what they want, what they like to do. And uh, it will be chosen by uh, first, of course, um, what they have done maybe in their home country, what, they already, uh, what skills they already have but also um, what they want. So if they say, um, I like, um, for example, uh, working and building, building something, building houses or some, they maybe will be a company that fits in what they want. And so it will be really um, adaptive uh, to the refugee. Okay, do we have any other volunteers? Okay, um, on the other side there. Thank you. Um, we, uh, we, uh, yes, I don't, um, we know that we knew, we knew that this question will come. Um, we um, put this uh, yes into the school because of um, yes some priority in the school that we yes uh, that the um, refugees uh, learn about our um, and more about our society and get some um, yes co um, contact um, uh, in yes with with our society. I would add something to that. I think it's really important to not only integrate them into the educational part, they should be integrated in all kind of parts, like cultural, sports, whatever it is. And so I think it's a really good choice, but I would recommend you to um, yeah, maybe put some English lessons there as well because otherwise they won't be able to come to an event like this and they should be able to participate as well. Well, I know um, in, in Hamburg I actually organize like um, football games for um, <coughs> foreigners and Germans, anyone can come, but like um, a lot of refugees also come and they find it very interesting to come. The language is English, of course, but they also get a bit of German every now and again. Okay, and it is a big, it's a big way to integrate people into society. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a mean question. Uh, do you think that the minimum wage is an obstacle uh, to integrate the refugees in the labor market? Uh, we don't think so, because um, as you have seen in our presentation, uh, the refugees will start with an internship and of course will not get paid for that. Um, that is of course uh, a problem for a beginning for the refugees because of course they want to earn money. Uh, but um, then they will earn their first money uh, when they do their education and uh, the education uh, won't be influenced by the minimum wage. So. You, um, 
and if they complete this uh, education, and there are workers that have the skills and the knowledge a German worker has too. And so um, he brings the same quality to the work and uh, is able to perform uh, the same. And so I see uh, no problem uh, because um, the companies uh, get the same person in the end, the same performance. Well, I have a difficult question as well because you were talking about the school education, but we all know that the school system in Germany is uh, managed federally, so every federal state has their own curriculum, has their own rights and whatever. Um, so how are you going to tackle that one? Um, so on the basis we took um, the um, federal system of uh, Schleswig-Holstein, we thought of that because we know this system. So, uh, for example, um, we uh, said here that we have to pay for materials. Uh, this is a f only a thing in Schleswig-Holstein, for example, uh, the so-called Lehrmittelfreiheit, so that um, the state has to pay for um, materials that are used in school. And so we based on the um, uh, Schleswig-Holstein uh, system, but I think uh, if this idea is really advancing uh, to the level of the um, uh, whole country, um, there will be conversation between every federal state and uh, so that um, there can be find a, found a compromise uh, for this problem. Okay, I think we have just about time for one more question from the audience, if someone has one. Okay. Make it quick, please. I have just one advice, just to uh, give six less today, because the only refugees of that state don't have that much to do, for what I know. And you could choose to give more lessons each day, so they would fit fast. Um, yes, uh, because um, when you think of our school, um, when we do, do have about eight or ten lessons a day, we are also not happy with it because we, we want to do ha we want to have our free time, and so we thought um, that the refugees uh, do have the same as um, as need of free time. Thank you. Just to add to that, maybe it's also a chance um, to combine school education and job orientation. So you might have some school lessons during um, the morning, but in the afternoon you go to a company, you can see how those companies work, um, because those are things that the refugees will need to know as well. Yes, and so they can also test um, what they want, uh, what they're willing to do, and so. Okay, and one more quick question, I guess. Actually, the same way. Uh, so, you, if um, a man with uh, an age of 43 years comes to Germany, uh, he still, sadly enough, doesn't uh, maybe have the same skills as German workers at this age. And we still uh, would um, test uh, these people. They still will do the internship and so on. Uh, and uh, maybe these people won't like it, but uh, so we have to make for them clear that it's really important that they do this to be integrated. And um, with the help of these internships and these aviation, uh, the 43-year-old worker will be able to start uh, at a later point in the system. So maybe his knowledge is really so good and he uh, uh, has experience in his work and so on, uh, he will be placed in a later course, uh, so uh, advanced in course, for course six for example, or course seven even, and so he doesn't have to do any uh, things, uh, any f not so much anymore. All right. I'm sorry, but okay, if you have something quick to say, maybe. And yes, and we, I think we also have to, um, there we have to choose betwe in between um, yes, um, educational jobs where you um, don't have to go to new university, because when you are um, like a doctor, you, I think um, the standards in Germany are really high, and um, for example, to 
building houses or something, um, there's uh, it's not so much um, yes, uh, stuff to um, learn new. Okay. okay, I'm sorry, but I think we have to leave it there. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Savine and Ferry for their enlightening expert opinion, but I'd really like to thank our... I'd especially like to thank our two young guests up here who participated in a very, very expert discussion and not in their native language. Okay, and finally, thank you very much to the Helena Lange Gymnasium, yes team, for a very interesting presentation.